Amstrad is? You know what the Amstrad CPC range was? You know who Alan Sugar is? You know who Roland is? Roland is a big part of the Amstrad CPC's history. In fact, it's hard not to think of him when discussing the Amstrad. He's a mysterious character with a lot to him, and if you're just hearing about the Amstrad CPC, then you're gonna hear of Roland. I expect you're wondering, who the hell is Roland? Well, I'm about to tell you. Because you can always trust a random woman on the internet wearing cat ears to know what she's talking about. Hang on, I'll put on some glasses, that'll make me look even more knowledge But OW! It's likely if you were an Amstrad CPC owner in the years following its initial release, then you'll probably have at least heard of Roland. Roland is a bit of a varied and eclectic character who was designed to become synonymous with the gaming side of the CPC range. The creation of Roland the character is usually credited to Sir Alan Sugar himself and Juan José Luis Dominguez. He was the president of what would become the Spanish arm of Amstrad. Sugar's idea was that by creating some kind of mascot, the Amstrad would have that edge that the Commodore on the Spectrum didn't quite have. The story goes that Roland was named after the computer engineer Roland Perry, who was working with Sugar to create the CPC range. Perry would be instrumental in the design and creation of the computers, and incidentally the dedicated game console, the GX4000, in later years. As far as the reason for the mascot being named after Perry, well, it's not entirely clear. It would seem to be just some sort of in-joke between Alan Sugar and the team, because there's very little relation between Roland Perry and the Roland of any of these games, unless Roland Perry lived a very interesting in very varied double life. So let's hurry up and look at the games that starred Roland. Roland first hit the shelves in the Amsoft 12 pack, a selection of games bundled in with the Amstrad CPC 464 in 1984, featuring in both Roland in the Caves and Roland on the Ropes. Roland on the Ropes establishes Roland as an intrepid explorer, wandering his way around a maze-like tomb while avoiding the standard things you might find in maze-like tombs. Like, you know, rats, skeletons, mummies, ghosts and vampires, they're all in there. Aside from being sort of flickery, the game does look quite nice, it's very cute and colourful and the designs of the enemies are quite adorable. Roland himself seems awfully happy to be there too, which is always a plus. A key problem with this game is that despite having fun gameplay, it gets very hard, to the point where it's quite clear that some of the mazes are not possible to even finish. Whether this is due to the game being rushed for release or not is unclear, but incidentally, this is a direct port of a game called Fred, a game released in the same year by Indiscomp for the ZX Spectrum and C64. So this game is just Fred, but with Roland, who looks exactly like Fred. Okay, so did computer engineer Roland Perry used to be an explorer of ancient tombs? Uh, no. Prior to his work with Amstrad, he was running a consumer electronics company in Essex with his friend. Roland in the caves next. What's nice about this one is how good it looks. Although obviously you'd only get to see it look this pretty on the Amstrad colour monitor. Anyway, this time Roland- Huh! Whoa! What, Ro Roland? You, uh, you, you okay there, buddy? You, you okay? What is that? Is that a praying mantis? Roland, what happened to you in that tomb? Were you cursed? The back of the box tells us that Roland has fallen into the caves on an extraterrestrial planet, and also, sidebar, he's taken on the special powers of aliens. Which I suppose goes a long way to explaining why this guy can now suddenly jump 200 feet into the air, and also not shatter his shin bones upon landing. Well, that escalated quickly. Well, like Roland on the ropes, this game didn't start out with the Roland branding. It's a port of another Indiscomp game, the ZX Spectrum's 1983 game Bugaboo the Flea, which explains why Roland is the flea. Oh no, I'm sorry, which explains why Roland has harnessed the power of aliens to shapeshift into a high-jumping extraterrestrial creature that looks like a flea. The laziness of the designers to at not least change Roland's appearance to something a bit less Franz Kafkaesque nightmare-y is pretty impressive, actually. Why is there a pterodactyl in here? Why is there a pterodactyl in this space cave? Isn't it bad enough that Roland has shapeshifted into a damn locust on an alien planet without getting goddamn j j j j j 
Jurassic Park involved? Maybe Roland can roll the weirdness back with this next game, Roland Goes Digging. Thankfully in this one Roland has both managed to return to Earth and is no longer Centipede's underwhelming cousin, so things are looking up for him. According to the box, this time Roland has been employed by some guy to get rid of some aliens that are running riot on a building site, which I imagine is a job listing that had plenty of applications. Now of course you'll recognise this gameplay style from Space Panic, because this absolutely is a clone of Space Panic, but with a sunburned Roland. So while it isn't a bad game, it's nothing new. Okay, well did computer engineer Roland Perry used to be a builder? No, no he didn't. I'm seeing a theme here. Alright, let's make that music stop by any means necessary. Roland ahoy! Roland has ditched his job as a builder and has become a pirate. Wow, that's quite a career progression. This is another one that isn't an especially bad game. As a pirate, you'll need to sail about and collect cannonballs that you'll use to blast open a harbour which is hiding the treasure you want. Once you've got it, you need to take it back to your hideout. Unfortunately, everyone is trying to kill Roland. Sea monsters, random women chucking stuff out of windows, nondescript sparkly ocean things. Was Roland Perry ever a pirate? I can't be the only person that's ever asked that. Here comes Roland on the run, a sad and frustrating Frogger ripoff with sound effects that will make your ears feel like they are being viciously poked with a snapped Z80 chip. The front cover shows Roland actually running away with a screen from the game itself. If you're not entirely sure what's going on here, don't worry, the blurb on the back of the case won't help you either. Apparently Roland has been held captive at Amsoft the software arm of Amstrad, presumably so they can prevent him from running off into space or being a pirate again. And now he's escaped by catching a train from Brentwood Station. Now he's got to ride it all the way to a hideout in Guildford. It's hard to tell what's more terrifying really, the thought of exactly what horrible things were happening to him at Amsoft that made him run away, or the thought of being forced to hide out in Guildford. <laughs> All Roland needs to do now is jump from a carriage of a train and run across a motorway without being killed. These things at the bottom are supposed to be places where he can safely hide without detection. You know, these massive fluorescent VGA ports on the side of a busy motorway. Did Roland Perry ever have to run away from Amstrad and hide in Guildford? Okay, so that one's a maybe. This guy's life is crazy. After all of these varied jobs, think about how good his CV is going to be. Roland is super employable. Two games of Roland's which will look similar are Roland in Time and Roland in Space. Doctor Who. That's, that's Doctor Who. You copyright infringing gids. Roland in Time sees our hero running around different time zones to collect crystals. At least that's what the box says, because I don't remember the penguins in a freezer age or the bad pun on Sainsbury's era. But this is how Roman soldiers used to cut about. Whee! 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 <laughs> you can switch between time zones by jumping into a phone box. Ah! Oh wow, that was awesome. Pleasingly, you're gonna get that every time you use the phone box to go to a different time. It's easily the best part of this game, because what you otherwise have is basically a manic minor-esque platformer with really boring and repetitive music. Roland in Space is pretty much the same game, but you're moving from planet to planet instead. In this game, Roland has been hired to pick up pieces of a super weapon to kill an evil space overlord, so that CV of his I mentioned earlier must have really worked out well for him. And finally, Roland goes square bashing. Straight away, you're gonna see similarities to Q-Bird. That's because this is a clone of Q-Bird, obviously, and it's one of Roland's better games, because even though it's simplistic, it controls well enough and it's quite addictive. Oh, and yes, this is Roland. That little box with dinky arms and feet is Roland. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Is Roland maybe inside the box? I love the idea that he's actually inside the box, because that means he's drawn a smiley face on the outside of it. But the cover artwork suggests that Roland, perhaps wanting to get back to his shape-shifting roots, is literally now a box. Now I'm all for body positivity, but what in the world is going on here? By the way, Roland Takes a Running Jump was a typing game published in Computing with the Amstrad. 
It's another Manic Miner-esque game, and it's awful, but to be fair, it's nice to see Roland has sorted out the whole hexahedron thing. Not that I was body shaming or anything, but sort yourself out, mates. Alright, so uh, what the heck was all that about? Why did all those games look so different? Wow, Wikipedia really helps me out a lot, doesn't it? How amazing is it to have all this free information at my fingertips? In that case, could you spare a little donation to keep the site running? Yeah, fucked. Well, aside from the fact that most of them are just branded versions of already made games, there were five different companies making the games in total, evidently with zero communication between each. Shoehorn in some half-baked reasons for Roland to change appearance from game to game, and you've sort of got a mascot. A terrible, troubled, intrinsically terrifying mascot. So, who the hell is Roland? He's a game character with absolutely zero likeness to Roland Perry, who he was named after, who was an astronaut, an alien killer, is capable of shapeshifting himself into a terrifying mantis creature, or a cube, had a somewhat unsuccessful stint as a pirate, transcends time and space, was held against his will by Amstrad's software departments, and is now hiding by a motorway in Guildford. I hope that clears that up. I'm so confused.